This information can be very disturbing, as it reveals an evil of great magnitude. If you choose to keep watching, we wish you strength, courage and wisdom that is definitely needed in understanding 9-11. 9-11 Answers is based on evidence at the crime scene and many witness accounts. The concrete floors, the furniture, the computers and the file cabinets weren't the only things missing after the collapses. The Twin Towers were also filled with people. Inexplicably though, almost half of the victims' bodies seem to have disappeared into thin air. When a building collapses, the victims tend to remain trapped between the pancaking floors. They may be crushed and mangled, but in most cases they remain in one piece. In fact, on the morning of September 11, local hospitals prepared to receive hundreds of victims they expected to be extracted from the rubble. Practically no one arrived. According to the chief medical examiner, 2,749 victims died in the Twin Towers, but fewer than 300 whole bodies were recovered. Nearly 20,000 pieces of bodies were found in the ruins, more than 6,000 small enough to fit in 5-inch test tubes. 200 different pieces were matched to a single person. 1,630 victims were eventually identified, 800 of which by DNA alone. This means that for 800 victims, there were no body parts large enough to be recognizable. The remaining 1,119 victims were never identified. This means that for more than 40% of the victims, not even a fragment large enough to recover DNA was found. For Joyce and Russell Mercer, there is no trace of the son they lost on 9-11, firefighter Scott Kapitko. You can't go to a cemetery, can't put flowers down. Personally, I lost a cousin in the building and never found his re remains. He was on the 100th floor of Tower 1 and they never found his, uh, anything or any remnants. Lorraine has a tombstone at the cemetery, but she isn't there. Militia workers found 74 new bone fragments on the roof of the Deutsche Bank building over the weekend. That's the most found since the end of major recovery operations at the site. The number of fragments found on the roof of the Deutsche Bank kept increasing by the day. Crews continue to find human bone fragments on the roof of the Deutsche Bank building next to the Trade Center site. The medical examiner's office says 142 fragments were found, bringing to 598 the total number of fragments found in the building. Eventually, more than 700 bone fragments were recovered from the Deutsche Bank building. USA Today wrote, the bone fragments are tiny, some the size of a pinky nail. Question. Can you explain how a simple gravitational collapse where the bodies remain trapped between pancaking floors could have produced more than 20,000 body parts out of 2,700 victims while more than 1,100 bodies left no fragments large enough to extract a DNA sample? Can you explain how a simple gravitational collapse could have produced the bone fragments and body parts from civilians and firefighters that were recovered from the roof of the Deutsche Bank building? You have two 110-story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer, to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a board at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know? It was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish-orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel Molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry, mm -hmm. yeah. like lava. Like, like lava. Like lava. You can you can cheat on yourself, and you can try to suppress it, but but you cannot. You you have seen it, and then there's no way back. It's very it's not very healthy, you know, to lie to yourself and say, no, I didn't see that. 
Lord Jacob Rothschild has boasted that the New World Order will have full control over humanity by the year 2018. What's up everybody? Truth Seeker here. It's crazy how these creeps that we all know now, we all know who they are. We know that they're basically the rulers of the world. Are allowed to still continue to keep going even though we all know. It's so strange that we don't have anybody that's trying to stop this. These people have been talking about their plans forever. And that's what this is about. It's, it's, a, it's actually says an issue of a Rothschild controlled economic magazine published in 1988 openly told its readers that a world currency would be in place by the year 2018. This close TV reports. With this in mind, the economist is operating as a quasi-propaganda arm for the banking empire and it is meant to prime the public opinion that the globalist agenda will implement. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. It seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened. Uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now, and New York is still unable to take on board what has happened to them today. People today want to have more say in their own lives, and they do not want policy dictated by bureaucrats and banksters. The Rothschild family is keeping the profit that is very low in the public eye. However, they do still have many business operations, and these are spread out over a wide array of sectors. There is not any particular member of the Rothschild family seen on the richest list of Forbes, but the family is said to have control over more than $1 trillion in assets worldwide. Therefore, they do still have a voice that is strong over the entire geopolitical spectrum, and many see this as a hand that is hidden in that manipulates events quietly in the background under a veil of secrecy. I mean, this is just something that they've been planning forever. The New World Order. We've heard so many people talk about it. we heard presidents talk about it. We know that's what they discuss at their Bilderberg meetings. We know, we, I mean, this stuff that we already knew that was going on for a long time. These rich, powerful elitists are the people that's running the show. Amazing, incredible picture word. Too far-fetched. For the third time today, it, Reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. We went after Iraq. They did not knock down the World Trade Center, okay? It wasn't the Iraqis that knocked down the World Trade Center. We went after Iraq. We decimated the country. Iran's taken over, okay? But it wasn't the Iraqis. You will find out who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. You may find it's the Saudis, okay? But you will find out. But it wasn't Iraq. Can you give us any better idea of how much of the plane actually impacted the building? You know, it, it, it might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, side of the building that's crashed in and as I said the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon uh, and then caused the side to collapse. While I was coming out of the Pentagon I didn't see any evidence of metal, airplane seats, you know, luggage, 
nothing that would give me any indication that it was a plane that had hit the building. Uh, most of the people that were in the area where I was located, and again, I, I did ask because I, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I was off of my judgment, but in speaking with everyone, uh, it was conclusive that n no one else in the area where I was located had seen any parts of planes or luggage or baggage or any things of that nature. The first thing you have to know about 9-11 is that the official narrative is a conspiracy theory. Vice President Dick Cheney admitted in 2006 that there was no evidence linking Osama bin Laden to 9-11. Nobody has evidence to support the official narrative that Osama bin Laden orchestrated 9-11. But uh, So we've never made the case or argued the case that somehow Osama bin Laden was directly involved in 9-11. That evidence uh, has never been forthcoming. Uh, Howard Lewis III, who's become a student of 9-11, especially the Twin Towers. Howard, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. Uh, my family has generations going back in construction. The World Trade Center in particular was a project that really got my dad all worked up until the introduction of the uh, demolition system that was mandated just after Nixon took office in 1969, in January. Now, it may have been in the background in the paperwork, but my dad didn't know about it until the steel was already up five stories. But then when they introduced the demolition system, my dad says, you know, putting a demolition system in a thir two 1,300-foot tall buildings in the middle of New York City and walking off and leaving it, that is insane. So he told me one day, at the same time, he said, son, you're going down to the public library, and if you don't find anything there, you're going out to the University of Washington Engineering Library, and you're going to document what these pigs are doing. And he used the word pigs, and that's not like my dad. There was going to be some kind of uh, nuclear bomb down the basement or below the basement that would make a big pit for the whole thing to fall into. And that's what they did. That's what happened. This guy, Dmitry Kalazov, he does a, a great job. I, don't, I can't vouch for all the details, you know. But what he's saying is completely 100% consistent with what I have known personally since they put the damn thing in in 1968 to 1969 and a couple of years after that. Lower Manhattan was deteriorating, and a radical plan for its revitalization was championed by David Rockefeller and his brother Nelson, then governor of New York. With Mayor John Lindsay on board, they set out to build a trade center the likes of which the world had never seen, and on a shocking scale, two 110-story towers. Nelson and David Rockefeller were clearly seen as the fathers of the World Trade Center project. In such an extent, that many New Yorkers at that time referred to the Twin Towers as David and Nelson. David was as chairman of the Downtown Lower Manhattan Association and as board member of Chase Manhattan Bank, the driving force behind the World Trade Center plans. David made sure of the finances of this gigantic project. Nelson was governor of New York and responsible for the building codes, permits, and political support regarding the World Trade Center. The Rockefeller family is well known for their fast fortunes and their push for globalization. In this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. It's crazy how these creeps that we all know now, we all know who they are. We know that they're basically the rulers of the world. Are allowed to still continue to keep going even though we all know. It's so strange that we don't have anybody that's trying to stop this 